so apparently um, Tyson Fury is going to have that long-awaited great trilogy with Derek Chisora. Um, <laughs> so this is, you know, I've compared Tyson Fury to Mayweather in the way he conducts his affairs outside of the ring many times. And this is another one of those bait and switch, I guess you would say, where Mayweather would, you know, throw it out there that he's going to fight Pauli Malinaji or he's considering fighting Malinaji and then he'd end up fighting, I don't know, Berto or Guerrero, right? So not quite as bad, but still shitty, right? So he would deflate the boxing fan, right? Make him um, upset, catch harsh criticism. And then he'd come out with, well, at least it's not Pauli Malinaji, right? <laughs> so that's exactly what Tyson Fury did, right? He's gonna, he, he made it seem like he was going to end. The WBC have played this, uh, played along with Tyson Fury's games by uh, messing about with their rankings for no other apparent reason than to facilitate Tyson Fury's next cherry pick, facilitate and justify. So, yeah, he would talk about Giga Char. It was put out there that he's going to fight him. And then, uh, well, I'm fighting Derek Chisora. Well, at least at least it's not Giga Char, right? Who's had two hip replacements and got shot in the stomach a whole bunch of times, right? So the first Fury Chisora fight made a lot of sense because they were both at that British level fighting for the British title, I believe. And the fight was pretty competitive, right? Uh, Chisora outboxed Tyson Fury in the first round and then hurt him a little bit in the second and then had a moment here and there. But Tyson Fury clearly won the fight, proved he was the better fighter. Chisora did his best, and that was his best, right? Like uh, British level, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe fringe world level, right? Maybe. And there was no need for the second for the rematch, but because, you know, it was somewhat competitive and Tyson Fury was waiting for his shot at the title, right? He was probably waiting for Vitaly to retire and for his younger brother to take the fight. And um, so, yeah, it was, you know, it was a money grab, I guess, and there was some history there, so maybe it made it, it was okay, right? The second fight was kind of like, yeah, I guess we'll take it, right, for the time being. But unlike in the first fight, Derek didn't come to win, right? All of a sudden, his legs weren't working. He wasn't listening to his trainer, who basically just became a cheerleader, was just yelling at him to use your legs, use your hands, right? Box, throw punches. And Chisora wasn't obliging, right? For whatever reason, he liked down for Tyson Fury, right? So now we come to this third fight, and no one thinks Chisora has any chance of winning, right? F even though he's gotten a little bit better technically since the first couple of fights with Tyson Fury, I mean, his punch resistance seems to be gone. There's so much wear and tear, and... He just doesn't really, unless he's fighting Usyk, right? He just, or maybe Joseph Parker in that first fight. Uh, he just doesn't try, right? He just doesn't try anymore. He, he just shows up to collect the paycheck. So, uh, Derek Chisora, you know, being a pressure fighter, I guess you would say, he's always had this problem where he would stand in your range, right? Because he, he finds himself usually fighting taller guys, ranger guys. And he stands in their punching range, right? Not his own, their punching range. But he tries to use head movement and upper body movement to slip punches, get closer to him and counter, right? Or punch with them at the very least. Instead of standing outside of their range, right? Obviously, he wouldn't be in range for himself. But standing out of their range, trying to get them to commit so he could close the distance as they're coming forward or stay out of range 
and then use his feet to close the distance and get into right slip past the other guys um outside shots right get to the mid range or inside and, and then throw punches right so as he's gotten older you know less motivated and i don't know if it's just laziness or he's just collecting paychecks the upper body and head movement has uh, he's shown it here and there right like in the Usyk fight it, it was there he really tried to knock Usyk out in that fight right couldn't do it but since he's just become more and more of a statue right so if, if he stands in his opponent's punching range and if he stands in Tyson Fury's punching range right and the head movement isn't quite there anymore. His legs will... Well, they didn't work last time, right? He was in the ring with Tyson Fury, so they probably won't work this time either. Uh, I expect to see another Dillian White performance, right? You guys remember maybe... What's this guy's name? Hidden Gem or something like that? Made this film study saying that how Tyson Fury drew Dillian White in, right? Dillian White... Is an absolute bum, man, technically. Like, okay, yeah, he's roided to the gills. We know this, right? And he could take a good ass whooping. And he and he hits hard, right? Because he's roided to the fucking gills, right? Fighter safety. Um, But so is Tyson Fury, right? We know this. This isn't like, right? We know this. So, yeah, he, he could take a good ass whooping. But technically, the guy's a bum, man. So apparently, according to Hidden Gem, right, Tyson Fury drew Dillian White in, right? He tricked him with his footwork and walked him into punches. Weird. So when you look at White, I mean, his stance is completely off, right? Just it's too short. You could probably say it's a little too narrow. His his feet are like perpendicular to one. Another. I mean, it's just all wrong, right? And he's standing up straight. And half of his body and two-thirds of his head face is just wide open for punches, right? Right. So we're just going to go go through this again to, to show you how people invent these narratives and, and hype up these these uh, so-called stars. Uh, I guess they're stars. So supposedly Tyson Fury drew Dillian White in, right? With this with this great footwork. When Dillian White just doesn't know how to fight. Right? So Dillian White, look at this footwork. Right? He's just walking like... He thinks this is a bar fight or something, right? He just... He just stands in front of Tyson Fury with his feet together, right? Straight up, wide open on the left side, right? Right in Tyson Fury's punching range, out of his boxing stand. <laughs> I mean, this is so awful. The guy's a bum, right? He is. So when, he, when he's in this position, right, the only thing he can do is step forward with his lead foot, right? To get into his punching stance, right? So Tyson Fury isn't drawing him in, right? Dillian White starts moving his feet and Tyson Fury answers, right? He readjusts his stance, right? Now, this guy wants you to, to focus on Tyson Fury's feet, right? How he's drawing them in, but he's not drawing him in. Dillian White's already stepping, right? He already started stepping forward a, a long time ago. And that was that was easy for Tyson Fury to see and predict what he was going to do, right? Dillian White just telegraphed everything he was gonna do. He showed him what he was gonna do. There was there was nothing there was nothing there for Dillian White to do. He doesn't have any lateral movement, right? Clearly he's coming forward attacking. When he brings his feet together like that, there's only one thing he can do, right? Step forward with his front foot. And his hands down, right? Or his right hand, not really by his chin, kind of in front of him, right? 
just allows Tyson Fury to probe, doesn't smack it down with the right hand, right? And he's completely open on his left side, right? So as Dillian White walks into a punch, Tyson Fury settles in, right? He gets he gets a nice little base under him for the uppercut by readjusting his back foot, right? Sits down on the punch a little bit, right? Fury's not, Fury's, yeah, he's responding to what Dillian White is doing, right? And then Dillian White sees the uppercut coming, right? He knows the uppercut's coming because he brings his hands in front of him, right? I mean, what else do you think is going to happen when Fury does that, right? And he's still standing up straight like a goddamn statue, right? His stance is still too short, in my opinion. His knee, he's standing straight up. His knees aren't bent, And um, yeah, he just he just walks into Tyson Fury's punch, right? The same way Brazil walked into um, Deontay Wilder's punch. Um, the same, in my opinion, the same way Chisora is gonna be walking into Tyson Fury's punches, right? He squints right before he gets grazed with that punch, right? He steps in, into punching range without throwing any punches, right? He steps into punching range with this loose guards, right? Tyson Fury didn't do anything spectacular here. He just hit a fucking punching bag, right? And this was like some huge crowd, huge attendance. I think it beat some kind of a record. Like people, people came out to see... An execution, basically, where the other guy had his hands tied, right? Shout out to Daniel Kinahan. Um, why would Chisora be any different, right? Why would the third Chisora fight be any different? Anybody? Thanks for watching.